Lucy, what you want to say to your fans, man? Anything? Yes. Please never get about, never get about me, never get about me. Say my name, rapper. Burn your ass. It's gonna be some pocket big shit again. I'ma burn one, and you can get it. Come get it like I told you. I keep my forty at all time. I don't play no game. I will burn one of you boys. I know they gonna get burned. Attorney Hiller Moore says it's quite possible Lil Boosie is connected to a string of murders. Police recently arrested nine men for the deaths of six others. Police say Boosie is part of this web. One other name stands out, is the only one charged with each. Michael Louding had a smirk on his face as Judge Trudy White ruled from the bench. In April, an East Baton Rouge Parish jury unanimously found the man known on the streets as Marlo Mike guilty of first degree murder. Louding confessed to detectives rapper Lil Boosie paid him to avoid in October of 2009. Detective Elvin Howard, how many times did you shoot him, Marlo Mike? About three or four. Howard, who gave you money, Marlo Mike? Boosie. Howard, how much? Marlo Mike, $2,800. It's like my, my, my girl snitched on me. You know, a woman would... Wait, wait, hold on. Your girl snitched on you? Yeah, she made a statement on me. That's why I took the charge, so she can walk. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? You know I got y'all on everything, right man? So y'all asked and now I'ma deliver. Today we gonna spit the real on the Louisiana legend and OG Boosie Badass. A lot of people see him smiling and living large now, owning his own record company, sports agency, doing movies, but before all of this he was just a young and thugger with heavy power in the streets. Boosie dang near survived everything, but it nearly cost him his life. In this video, we gonna focus on his murder charge, how the court nearly got him put to death using his own lyrics, and his alleged shooter who got a tattoo saying, yo Boosie, who's next? I kid you not, man, it's like something straight out of a movie. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. When you talking about Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the conversation has to mention Torrance Hatch Jr., better known as Little Boosie, also known as Boosie Badass. Boosie came up in the city with both parents, but it was anything but a model home. Boosie witnessed things no kid should have ever seen. His pops was an OG in the streets, and at times things got out of hand where he abused his moms, but Boosie never ignored the good about him. Unlike his brother, he was a daddy's boy to the core of him, always in the streets and learning the ropes. And my daddy was like, he was a G. You know, he was a gang, he was a G in the hood, and you know? I always hung under my daddy, so. Which is why his passing affected him so much. When you lose that kind of, when you lose that kind of love, like, you spiral out of control, you know, I just stopped everything, I just. Before Boosie was even 14 years old, his father succumbed to his illness after living with a tumor on his brain. It's also speculated that he was murdered. That's when everything changed in Boosie's life. From there, he went on to stay with his grandmoms, where the environment was surrounded by hustlers, gangsters, and street dealers. Boosie was tired seeing his mom struggle, and with his pops gone, he knew he had to do something to bring a change to the house. Instead of getting a nine to five, Boosie became his environment to secure a bag and better their lives. He had hoop dreams that was nice on the court. <laughs> Even that went down the drain after he turned to the streets. It was time for me to man up, bro, so... All the rest of that was irrelevant. School, all that was irrelevant. I, I had my mind on, uh, really on the money, you know? Boosie was going through it as just a team, but the rap game in the streets became his way out and his therapy. In the late 90s, Boosie would join the rap collective concentration camp after being introduced to member c Loke that took him in and mentored him in the rap game. Boosie was featured on group albums like Thug Brothers and c Loke's album It's a Gamble. Boosie's raw, unique style and authentic hood bars quickly captured the air of the streets in tracks like Outlaw with c Loke. Lil Boosie wasted no time feet in the streets. He dropped his debut solo album, Youngest of the Camp, and it was up. From there, he released street banger after street banger like solo albums for my thugs, badass, and collaboration projects, ghetto stories, and gangster music with his day one homie, Webby. Everybody listening to all here is not trying to, you know, yeah. bite off us. You know, we've been dropping here. You ever drop, run into any of the cats that bit off you? Nah, we ain't <laughs> ran into them yet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they know who they is. 
And if you was outside and down south around that time, then you already know Trill and T had the streets on lock for a little bit. Boosie was taking over Baton Rouge, Louisiana and reaching worldwide spitting the real over beats. He was certified on wax and certified in the streets. A youngin' but a shot caller with the hood behind him. Key, I, everywhere I go, I'm talking about every cone I touch, they, they damn near running behind my car. Boosie, Boosie, you know what I'm saying? Oh, and the OGs, oh, they love me. Boosie was strapped and ready for war, letting it be known. It was only a matter of time before the law targeted him, though. The day finally came when cops caught Boosie lacking. October 2008, East Baton Rouge Sheriff's deputies found a bag of dope, a cigar loaded with herb, and another unspecified illegal substance, and a strap in the car. He was charged with possession of weed and a possession of a firearm with a controlled dangerous substance. With his legal team putting in work, Boosie struck gold, getting a plea deal that cut his potential 10-year jail sentence down to at most two years of which he had to do mandatory. The last time Torrance Hatch, aka Little Boosie, was on WAFB, it was last November. He was spending time at home the night before beginning a 10-year jail sentence for a third offense the charge and probation violation. I'm trouble easy to get in, but it's hard to get out. Boosie caught a break, but the judge wasn't letting up. He made sure to let Boosie know any slip up and he's applying steady pressure on his top. Soldier hate me. The judge looked at me and said, what's happening, Boosie? He called me by my nickname. What you think I'm You won't railroad a nigga and lose me in the system. But like C-Murder and Mac, I refuse to be a victim. Boosie was given an ankle monitor on house arrest, but the judge was in the cut, and that's a scary sight. Boosie was caught violating probation when the judge found out he broke his house arrest. The judge put Boosie away with the quickness, sending him to the pen to serve four years of his 10-year sentence with the probability of getting out, and two with a five-year probation. The cookie was crumbling bit by bit. He was going away with seven kids and one on the way. But Boosie a strong dude, though. What he didn't know was the hell he was about to get raining down on him. In early June 2010, Baton Rouge state and federal law enforcement leaders began an investigation into a strange of South Baton Rouge murkings and non-fatal shootings. This led to a series of indictments. Unlucky for Boosie, that led cops right down to him for the hit on Terry Boyd. Boosie was now facing a first-degree hit charge for the 2009 hit. Boosie was snatched up along with eight others involved with a total of six bodies. Aside from the other eight men, one in particular played an important role in Boosie going free or being given capital punishment. 17-year-old Mike Louding, also known as Marlo Mike. District Attorney Hiller Moore says it's quite possible Lil Boosie is connected to a string of murders. Police recently arrested nine men for the deaths of six others. Police say Boosie is part of this web. One other name stands out, is the only one charged. With his name coming from the homicide guru Marlo Stansfield on the TV show The Wire. Marlo Mike was so ruthless allegedly that officers reported him as being, and I quote, a teen hitman with the mind of a maniac, a rogue gunman, haunted by a demonic choir of voices hollering kill. Goodness. Marlo later confessed to nine bodies, dropping his first when he was a youngster. I mean, even younger. Nine people, he admitted to that? Yeah. Wow. That's why he in jail. They never had not one witness on him. On none of those murders. But that's not even the most savage part. Marlo Mike was at first flipping on Boosie, saying Boosie paid him 2800 to murk a boy. Detective Elvin Howard, how many times did you shoot him? Marlo Mike, about three or four. Howard, who gave you money? Marlo Mike, Boosie. Howard, how much? Marlo Mike, $2,800. That put Boosie in a messed up situation. I know the judge was rubbing his hands like Birdman, you under smell it? Imagine Boyd was chilling home watching TV on the couch when bullets ran through his window, ending his life. Louding did describe on the tape in detail how he ran up to the house Terry Boyd was laying in, put a gun to the window, and shot through. Police reports further break down the crime scene. The exact date of the hit was October 21, 2009, around half past midnight. A 9mm gunman fired six bullets through the front window of Boyd's house on Vermilion Drive. Police officers pulled up at the East Baton Rouge spot to find Boyd lifeless. Just one month before, Boyd had completed a five-year stint at the Winfield Correctional Facility. The autopsy revealed at the time of his passing, Boyd's bloodstream was spiked with morphine, tree, 
and Codeine. Cops were clinging to Marlowe as the key link to Boosie and were using him by any means to bring down the Louisiana OG. The prosecution had a taped jailhouse confession from Marlowe and telephone records that trace him to Boosie's recording studio during the hours before and after the hit was carried out. The craziest part is that the cops had evidence of a tattoo Marlowe got two weeks after the hit with a picture of an AK-47 with the phrase, Yo Boosie, who's next? I heard a bragging online, but this dude was taking it to a whole nother level, just made his body a billboard. But that's what happened when you got young shooters. OGs, oh, take notes. But cops didn't stop there though. They were listening to Boosie's tracks like hardcore fans and found some daunting connections in his music to the alleged hit. On the track 187, Boosie raps the bars, Yo Marlo, he drive a Monte Carlo, that gray. I want that dead today. Ending the bar with either, here go the key or here go the cake, either way. One speaks on the whip, the other speaks on the bread, on Boyd's head. From court reports, Pierce cops list the lyrics as, here go the cake. Of course, right? Yo, Marlo, he got a Monte Carlo. That bitch gray, I want that bitch dead today. Here go the cake. The song Body Bag, they also stated was Boosie bragging about the hit. Both song titles alone were a bad idea, but not only that, Constantino Dimitriello's, I know I ain't pronounced that right and I ain't even gonna try. A forensic IT specialist who was present during Boosie's house raid seized hard drives with his music and other info like a picture with the tattoo mentioned before on Marlowe. During his IT shenanigans, he determined both 187 and Body Bag were recorded the night of Boyd's shooting incident. They must have found dude from an anonymous hacker group or something. He dug up a couple other songs, In Word and Trouble, recorded 2009 on November 2nd, where Boosie raps, I kill you with my money. I got some killers on the payroll, and they know when it's time to handle biz, lay low. May 21st, 2009, on the song Limelight featuring Hurricane Chris, Boosie raps, Feelings gone, ain't no love up in my body. Marlo Mike in the back seat begging for a body. Boosie songs were coming back to haunt him, but they were not done yet. Check out these two bars tying him to Marlo. In Limelight, he raps, N word try to kill me after that, a N word stole my name. Try to kill me after that. This ties him into the beef with Louisiana rapper Noosie, who was beefing with Boosie after he dropped a diss name Noosie Badass, after clowning with his homies about taking the name. Double back to 187, Boosie raps, my about business, they gon' solve the problem. Five dead in six months, these scared now. Any whoever tried to play with me, they dead now. Now this is important, especially the time frame, because law enforcement had Marlowe down for a slew of murders across just a 14 month period. And guess who one of the targets was? Boosie rival Chris Nucy Jackson. So now the prosecution had Marlowe Mike's confession and all these lyrics connecting the alleged dots. If Boosie was facing capital punishment, cops even had someone in the streets among Boosie's peoples talking anonymously on the news painting Boosie as a murderer. Through all this, this man kept it silent, ready to die a hood hero. You facing death penalty, you round it, but smiling every day, cracking jokes, woo the woo the woo, because I never let them see me hurt. Man. I'm not, you already got me down, you know, I'm not finna let you see me hurt. Boosie was still thugging to feed his family, getting more charges while still in jail, this time for trying to smuggle illegal substances inside, and his baby moms got caught and ratted him out. Because a woman will break. It's like my, 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 my girl snitched on me. You know, a woman would- Wait, wait, hold on. Your girl snitched on you? Yeah, she made a statement on me. That's why I took the charge, so she can walk. Boosie was standing on everything and saying it with his chest, and the craziest thing happened next. Boosie beat the charges. How did you feel when you heard the not guilty verdict? Oh, I was happy, man. I ain't gonna lie, I, was, I just put my hand up. I was happy. I was like, you know, I'm coming home. <laughs> Turns out instead of testifying against Boosie, he changed his statement and testified on behalf of Boosie, saying Boosie had no involvement at all in the hit on Boyd. Boosie would later say in a Vlad interview, Marlo was like his son, even signing for him as a guardian at school. When when he told on you initially, what did you think? This was your close friend? Yeah, this was my son. This was my... I was his guardian on his, at his... at school. 
Wow. The sad part. And had no hard feelings because Marlowe had wrote him in prison apologizing for what he did and letting him know he's going to make it right. Two months after I got in jail, I okay. knew he was, he was going to testify for me. He had already wrote me letters and shit saying, you know, why he did it. He was up, he's sorry. He would never catch the stand on me, you know. I already knew I was coming home. In 2013, Marlowe would be sentenced to life. Boosie would be a free man in March 2014, completing his parole in 2018. Not only that, Boosie earned his GED while in the pen. And when he got out, he found out he had cancer and beat that too. Then he changed his name to Boosie Badass and signed to Atlantic Records with his own label, Badass Entertainment. The man is like a wind magnet, and you gotta respect his stamp of approval by the streets as one of the few real left. So there you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support, man. I'm glad I was able to give y'all what y'all wanted. We got more videos coming. I'm gonna catch y'all when I spin the block for the next one. And remember, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.